And we are live. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel for the Crypto Sunday Summary. This being the 7th of April 2024, where as always a friend easy way of supporting this work is by simply hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new, ensuring you also knock that notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Also watch out for the bots in the comments below. I'll never ever ask you to contact me via Telegram or WhatsApp. They are scammers impersonating me, trying to trick you. Please stay away. A very special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Malcolm from just wheeliebins.com.au, Michael Dunford of Monash Glass, Lee Perry, Darren Carter from Endura Flooring Extra, Gary from the Hive Carter and Estate Pool, Carly McEwen Coaching, Luke Brody Express and Closed Car Transport, Evan Floyd and Treagle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You make the world a better place. Solar Roller Triple Eight. Thank you for that sound check there. We have Evan Floyd in the house. Great to have you here. He starts off with a question. He says, Adam, what are some skills a well-rounded man like you want to try to develop? Uh, example, uh, fixing things, et cetera. You know what I would like to be better at? I'm a bit of a handyman, but I really struggle with electrical work. It's probably a good thing because it's illegal to do electrical work. But if you get it wrong, <laughs> something really bad's going to happen. Uh, but I've got a good friend who's a sparky. I would like to improve my electrical work and prom probably plumbing. I'm okay with carpentry. I, I get by with that. Um, but yeah, electrical work is where I need to go. Extraneous Stu, we all missed you Wednesday evening, Adam. Uh, worth the wait for uh, Sunday evening. Keep up the good work. Yeah, so I missed a Wednesday um, crypto campfire. Uh, we never miss a Sunday summary. So the Sunday summary, I haven't missed one for, I think we're over two years now. But the crypto campfire on Wednesdays, that was just a, a little ring in so we could have a little bit more of a um, casual chat. That's not guaranteed. Uh, but I must admit, I've got to admit, um, Australian stew missing that Wednesday. I it feels like that's the first time I've missed it in a long time because I felt <laughs> I felt very empty after not doing it. And I'm I, I missed you all. It was only I mean I did a live show on Tuesday, so I've only been away like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six days I've been away. But it feels like an eternity. So it's good to have you back, and I appreciate <laughs> you mentioning that Australian stew. Big Bears flight here, Crypto Bean and Steve J. Hey, Steve J. It's good to have the OGs here, which is Wonder Woman, Steve J. Crypto Bean, Big Bears flight legends, and we also have Solar Roller Triple A as well. Jay, an OG, Crypto Boy Nick, another one. We're all in the house today. John, John, Johnny, John, 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 John. He says, uh, "Good evening, morning, day, or night to everyone. Wishing you all the fur, you and all your fur babies, the very best. Thank, blessed week. Thank you. As I struggle with my words, I have um Leela's hair on my face again. I don't know what it is. As soon as I record, or just before I record, Leela comes in. She curls up against my shoulder, and I get bloody fluff all over my face. Um, if you look at the halving clock here, we've got straight into it. Where Crypto Boy Nick says, Bitcoin halving current prediction is 19 April." So, yep, what we've got here is we've got the 19th of April. And remember, we're looking at the 20th of April. Why has it gone to the 19th of April? Because it's not a set date. It's a number of blocks. And according to the data at NiceHash, and I like... Because I just logged out... <laughs> So I've got this mouse, right? If you want to know what happened, I've got this mouse and where my thumb goes, there's a back button on the side of the mouse. And when sometimes when I go to move the mouse, it makes me go backwards or as in like a back button. And I just backed myself out of <laughs> the whole show. You know what? I'm going to, that's another thing I'm going to spend money on this uh, cycle. I'm going to get a new mouse that ensures I don't uh, go back every time I press on that because it's a real pain in the backside. Anyway, over to the Bitcoin halving. What's interesting with NiceHash. So I used NiceHash years ago when I was uh, mining. And NiceHash had a problem. Something happened in their system. And they, they basically shut down for a while. It's got Lila's hair on me again. And what happened is when it shut down, there was a lot of balances that were lost. Oh, I shouldn't say lost. They were actually paused. And I was expecting never to see that money come back. But NiceHash, about, I think it was about a year later, they actually wrote to me and they said, hey, we've got that money for you. And I said, like, what money? And it was the money that I had mined through NiceHash. And they kept their word and they gave it back to me. So I've always got respect for NiceHash because they actually paid what they owed to all of its users. And now that it's back, and it's been back for a while, it's been working really well, uh, I trust this data because I trust the company. So 12 hours, two sorry, 12 days, two hours, 17 minutes and 54 seconds. Johnny Metis saying hi from the desert. Would expect nothing less. Luke Crocker says hi all. Red Squirrel, oi, oi, oi. Blasphemous libel. G'day, blasphemous libel. Evening, mate. 
Phoenix is here. Hillary. Hey, Hillary. She says, good morning. Um, Brady M says, good morning, Adam. Bitcoin maxis continue to be right. <laughs> so Brady M is our resident um, Bitcoin maxi. We've got another one in the house. Remember, we are a diverse community here. Everyone's welcome. Just no haters. Nash M says, g'day, Uncle Adam and everyone. Great to have you here, Nash. Ida Conk. Hey, Ida. She says, hello, crypto family and vintage voltage and Craig Patton's in the house as well. Khan Hessen says, random question, Stokesikens. As more institutions invest in BTC, do you think any regulators would step in a GameStop or Wall Street bet style to save any institutional investors that have shorted BTC? Uh, I think anything is possible. Um, th debate in the comments below, but um, GameStop and Wall Street memes, look, that, that was a, a perfect storm that happened years ago, and that whole thing made me... <laughs> I, I, I was an innocent bystander, Khan. And as a result, I made a lot of money off that. A lot of money. Insane amounts of money. It was random. I get a call one day and someone says, how do I buy Dogecoin? I'm like, why would you want to buy Dogecoin? It's Dogecoin. He's like, no, it's pumping. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's Dogecoin. No one cares about Dogecoin. And I opened my phone, went to my account, and yeah, I was I was rich. I was rich. Good things happen randomly in crypto. Hillary says, what do you think about XRP, Stablecoin, and AMMM? -M -M -M? Uh, I've got... Little to no confidence in XRP, and the stablecoin means nothing <laughs> to me. There's a big stablecoin uh, competition at the moment where a lot of people are using stablecoins or trying to make a better stablecoin. Ultimately, I think XRP is yet to deliver. It's failed to deliver. You can see at the moment, XRP continues to sit at the 59 cent mark. Absolutely nothing. It hasn't done anything. Its all-time high was over $3.50. It never met its all-time high in the last halving. It's a correction cycle. My apologies. And it's still way below where it should be. And everything else has gone through the roof. Everything. Everything. Even Dogecoin is beating XRP um, in its price performance. Not by market cap, to be clear, but, but in price performance and returns. Dogecoin is up to nearly 20 cents again. Will we see a dollar Dogecoin this cycle? I think so. I, I think we'll see a dollar Dogecoin. Ethereum at $3,399 and Bitcoin just about to cross the $70,000 mark. And, and you know what's funny is I was thinking about this today. You say, oh, it's just under the 70 grand. It's still above the all-time high of the last cycle. Bitcoin is above the all-time high of the last cycle. And we're like, uh, $69,000. It's so interesting how quickly we forget how amazing these markets are, how dynamic they are. And if we go over to the fear and greed index, we can see we're at extreme greed. We're at, num we're at 78, extreme greed. It, it, things are moving so quickly in these markets. Uh, this time last week, or just yesterday, we're at 75. This time last week, we're at 75. And this time last month, we're at 81. So it's a, a wild roller coaster ride. And we expect that to go over 90 when, well, possibly after the halving. Remember when the halving kicks in. And I hope to be uh, broadcasting live when that happens. But when the halving kicks in, it's not like the market will run away straight away. Well, maybe it will. Anything can happen. But it's not a set thing where the halving occurs and then boom, off we go to the moon. Uh, I would suggest that we've already jumped the gun in the sense that we really hit an all-time high before the halving occurred, which historically, that's not <laughs> it's not meant to happen. Uh, history doesn't guarantee what's going to happen in the future, but sure it does um, rhyme sometimes. Uh, Vintage Voltage says, back after pork steaks. Yum, nice. Uh, the Wolf is King of Wolf Hill says, hi all. AK okay, says, buenos noches. Uh, buenos, I, I think you meant not chess, but I'm with you, AK. Okay. Uh, John, John, Johnny, John says, oops. Evan Floyd said, Adam rugged himself. Yeah, <laughs> I rug pulled myself on my show. Douglas Lucas says, hey, the crypto gang and Stokesy. Uh, and Solar Roller, you legend. He says, five by five again, as I come back on live. Alex says, hello all. And Jason Friskin says, Justin invested in a project called Core that assists with the BTC network, similar to Stacks, with some of the profits from my Miro. Now, Jason, Jason out there made a lot of money off Miro, a, a meme coin, and it's good to see that you've invested into something else with some of those profits. Well done there. Uh, Ollie Churton says, morning, crypto fam. I hope everyone is well. I'm just going to take off my jacket. It's too hot. Cassandra Socks. Hey, Cassandra Socks. She says, hi, Adam. Good to have you here, Cassandra. And Crypto Boy Nick is saying Australia asset manager. Uh, yes, Monochrome applies with CBOE Australia for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Eyes decision by mid year. So, yes, we've got a, a spot backed ETF coming to Australia for Bitcoin, and you're going to see others coming elsewhere. You can't stop it. You cannot stop the momentum of these markets. 
over to the technicals if we um oh just before we go to the technicals i i I'm, here's an, an image from my book i've told you that uh, i've written a book about clucky uh this is one of the images I'm, I'm just waiting i'll show you another one here here you go there's an image of everyone on the estate so i've written a children's book i literally have to just fix two pages and then clucky the courageous chicken is what we came up with <laughs> It's going to be released. Now, here's little Dino here. Everyone looking at the screen, unless you're driving. And if you're driving, pull over. So you've got Ding Ding, Leela, Punky, Cuckoo, Clucky, Cocky, and Dino. The whole family is there. And I've got a frog there because I've, I've got a pond on the estate. And frogs often come to visit. This is my favorite picture in the whole book because it's just, it's the synergy of the estate where everything comes together. So stand by, the book will be released soon. I just need that last image. Over to the technicals. You're looking at Bitcoin to US dollars in one daily candles. And the yellow line is an ascending wedge that I drew in last week. And you can see we actually broke below that ascending wedge just. And what I mean by just is that we were tracking so beautifully. And then we have these two, look, people are calling it a flash crash. It's so difficult to say what a crash is now. So one candle dropped 4.5%, uh, but two candles in a row. If we go from a body to wick, just to make it extreme, it was 9.63% in two days. That's a lot in Bitcoin. So is it a flash crash? Well, the thing is, within another two days, it pulled itself right back up to only a 3.74% drop. So, you know, I, I think during the week, actually it was Wednesday, I can remember, because... I was going to do the crypto campfire, but I, I just, I physically didn't have a time. I'm doing too many projects at the moment. And that and the crypto campfire I can miss, I can't miss Sunday summary. I've committed to that. I hope I never break the record. Sure, I have to break it sometime. But there was a lot of FUD out there saying, well, the, the markets have crashed. It's all gone down. You know, what's happening to Bitcoin? And I'm sure most of you, you're like, who really cares? I don't know. It's, it's just Bitcoin. It's just crypto. It's just pulled back a little bit. And one of you I spoke to, I won't say your name, but it's like, it, we were so happy. We're like, oh, isn't it wonderful to get this red day? And I'm like, yeah. And, and my mate is like, so did you buy the crap out of this glorious red candle? And I'm like, you're damn right I did. And it was so good. And like, oh, you know, you're into crypto when you see a red day and you're like, it's a good day. You know, you, we, we want the opportunity to scoop up some more crypto before it goes ballistic. And it is going to go ballistic, not financial advice. All investments come with risk. Do your own research and in crypto, anything can happen. But we don't have long left. It's already gone ballistic compared to where it should have been at this time of the cycle. But at the moment, we just had an opportunity to hopefully buy the dip and pull back. It pulled down about 9%. Some people were saying flash crash and immediately it recovered. And away we go again. I'll just draw in another trend line. One, two, three. I mean, there's another trend. It's <laughs> just away we go. Now, are we now tracking in a little parallel ch channel that's going up? Look, at, at this stage, anyone who's swing trading Bitcoin, I, I just think it's very dangerous. I know some people are. I got it. But a lot of people are being squeezed out of their long positions. And a lot of people are getting wrecked trying to short Bitcoin. So people gain confidence and they're like, right, Bitcoin's tracking up. I'm going to long this bad boy. And they long it. And then you get a short squeeze, which is this one here on the 16th of March, another one on the 19th of March. And then the one that recently happened on the 2nd of April. It's like, man, all those long positions just got liquidated to hell. Then the others who went really long and, they're, you know, they're logging in the market somewhere down here. And then you had those candles, those red candles that I've just pointed out. They got squeezed out of their positions. So what's the best thing to do? You just dollar cost average. It is so easy. Now, of course, if you want to swing trade, th that's cool. You can still do it and you can do it, I would I would suggest, not recommend, but just think out loud. I'm just some random dude on the internet. You do that in different coins. There's over 2 million coins to swing trade. Big, I, I even said to this my mate, to, I said this to my mate years ago when he first got into crypto. He was swing trading the crap out of Bitcoin. And it's not that it was wrong. It's just that I said, no, no. And because he was a mate, I could speak to him frankly. Hello, mate. And I said, no, no, just dollar cost to average Bitcoin. Leave that in a separate pile and swing trade the other coins. And he actually took my advice. Bless him. How, how rare is it that mates actually take your advice? And I got a message from the, him the other day. And he's now in, the, in a very comfortable six-figure position. Very comfortable. And he's not, he's not 
like he didn't start off with multi-millionaire status but he he followed the advice and he did the right thing and now he's got a big pile of bitcoin and he's been swig trading all of these random coins and he's looking really good really good indeed well done friend chris d says uncle adam solar roller says did i see something about btc etf in australia yep it's inbound and you'll see them everywhere chill winston said hey adam and crypto fam why don't you talk about slash recommend dexes over sexes uh, self-custody can access uh, nearly any coins as soon as they hit the market what am i missing cheers um you're not missing anything at all so a, a sex is or a, a kex it's a cex <laughs> we say sex <laughs> we need to work on that name so a dex is a decentralized exchange and a kex a cex is a a centralized exchange um but what's the question why don't i talk about it um and i didn't realize i didn't talk about it we you know, we, we talk about Uniswap. There was Pancake Swap for a while. You can just even use MetaMask as a DEX in itself. You can just swap from one coin to another. Um, I don't know. I'll talk more about it. In fact, you know what? Maybe I'll do a whole video on, on DEXs. But it's just part of the ecosystem. You want to use... I think for, for many people, the, the, a SEX, a centralized exchange, is a lot easier. You get in, you do your business, and you get out. A, a DEX actually involves another step where you've got to get onto it somehow now on metamask which isn't really a dex but it can kind of treat it as one you need to somehow get onto it's all about the on-ramp you're helping me have a breakthrough if you want to use these dexes you typically need a stable coin or ethereum or in fact any coin and then the question is well how do i get that coin now you can mine the coin you can earn the coin you can get the coin donated but essentially you need an on-ramp and most people on ramp through a sex, a centralized exchange. So you get onto the centralized exchange and once you get that, your coin, whatever it may be, then you can go out into the crypto land and do whatever you need to do. Uh, but it's a fair question and maybe I should talk more about DEXs instead of sexes. <laughs> Matt Eagle says, is any chance your lawyer came around about the inner circle crew? Nah, no, nah, we. Uh, thank you. So for those of you who don't know, we spoke about um, doing paid inner circle, um, which was uh, just meeting every two, every week for two hours. Uh, I've got to follow my legal advice uh, from my good lawyer out there. Hello, good lawyer. And it, it's just, it's it's financially, it's not worth it. And legally, it's just not worth it. Um, I, I probably would have made about 40,000 US in a year. And you might say, well, that's a lot. No, nah, it, it's not, not for the risk. And, and I can make that money much quicker doing less without risking myself to litigation. So it, it's a risk to reward. I always talk about risk to reward ratios. And it's not just about crypto. It's about everything in life, marriage, career transport, vehicles, holidays, whatever you do. Friendships, risk to reward ratios. Uh, get ready to cut toxic people out of your life when you make a lot of money. Craig Patton says, opened up CoinSpot account on behalf of my, oh, well done, on behalf, behalf of my 16-month-old daughter. She is now dollar cost averaging every week. Craig, that is fantastic. So Craig has a 16-month-old daughter and he has opened up a CoinSpot account of which I highly recommend as the, without a doubt, the number one exchange in Australia, the number one by time, by size, by reliability, by so many factors. And what Craig has done is he's hopefully used my link. He's come over to crypto.land and he's opened a coin spot account for his daughter. And now instead of dollar cost averaging fiat that constantly goes down in value, he's dollar cost averaging, I'm presuming Bitcoin every week, or maybe diversifying a bit, for his daughter. And by the time she's 18, Craig, you've probably got a millionaire daughter there. Well done. You're investing in your daughter and probably your future retirement. Um, now, don't forget, if you want to buy any crypto anywhere of any type, come over and use my broker, our broker. Click on this link here, go to Stormrake, and there's any coin you want anywhere. You so, uh, Actually, you know what? Fair enough. Uh, Chill Winston said, why don't we talk about DEXs? Well, you've got sexes, DEXs, and brokers. <laughs> And the broker here can get you any coin anywhere at, at a really good price. Like he doesn't just get it from one site. He looks, his company looks for all of the sites and gets you a really good price on any coin you want, any coin. Because many people come to me and say, Adam, where do I get this coin? Where do I get that coin? And where do I get this coin? Well, th there's two ways. I'll teach you quickly. First of all, you can go to, well, there's a few ways. You can find out on through any of these exchanges, uh, do they list the coin? Or you could just ring up a broker like our mate here, Bish, click on this link and go and use him and either email him or call him and just get it um, purchased immediately. 
But the other way you do it, so say you want, you're on coin market cap. This is, this is how I typically find where I find a coin. So let, let's uh, name a random coin. I don't know, whiff. There you go. Dog whiff hat. So I'm now over to coin market cap. Now, now there's a few ways you can do this, but this is what I do is the easiest way. So I, I look up whiff. It's like a, what, this dog whiff hat thing. It's number 37. So I click on this dog whiff hat thing and it loads up here. And boy, isn't this doing well and did anyone see my post over the week on x with the party with the boys from dog with hat didn't they look like they were having a lovely time kids an absolutely lovely time anyway here i am on coin market cap i've looked up the coin and i scroll down and you can see it here it's all in the markets it's on it's just listed everywhere where you can get it you can get it on binance gate.io kucoin uh, kraken mexc and you can go through it and you can see where it's listed you can get it on BitGet, which I recommend. Come over to the crypto.land, join BitGet. And th there's just so many places you can get it. But when you have a random coin, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some random coin, but I can't because it's too random. There's very few places that you can get it. And the issue is when you try and buy this coin, if you're going to a SEX, a centralized exchange, by the time it's on the SEX, it's a little bit late. If you really want to get in early, you've got to be on a DEX. You've got to be on a decentralized exchange. And it, it, that could be um, Uniswap, PancakeSwap, MetaMask to an extent, um, PulseX to an extent. You can use all of these different DEXs. But if, if that's all overwhelming, you just ring up a BISH at uh, Stormrake. You come over to the crypto.land, click on the link and go to the broker and say, just get me this coin. And their team goes and finds the best price for it. For it and then you can custody or they custody it for you. Moving on to stories of the week. Uh, before we do, just looking at the US debt clock, we're at 40, uh, $34 trillion, $34.63 trillion. So we'll be crossing the $35 trillion debt mark in not too long. And fun fact, I was looking back at some random video uh, that I did at the beginning of the year. Uh, sorry, last year. Time's moving so quickly. We're already in April. We're already approaching halfway 2024. And it was so little time ago that this was at 32 trillion. And now we're nearly at 35 trillion. It's just rocking, all right, uh, rocking along. We're, we, <laughs> we're about to collapse. Now, in the collapse, what will they do? Will they print more money? Will they pretend it didn't happen? Will they go to war? Will they move to a new type of money? Will they just start wiping zeros off the end of the currency like they did with the Zimbabwean dollar? What will they do? I don't know, but I'm certainly hedging my bets and protecting myself and getting into crypto. Jay says, XRP going to have their own stable coin soon. Yeah, but uh, agreed, Jay, but is anyone going to use it? And, and here's the thing, thought experiment. I, I've said this before. If you look into my deep dives about XRP ages ago, years ago, years ago, and boy, did I get some hate from it. But it proved to be true. The question is, do banks, hang on, it goes back. Do we need banks? Now, I don't think we need them, but I think they're going to be around for forever. Okay, so accept that. So the second part is, are banks going to use XRP or are they going to use their own coin? Now, the XRP army has said for years that the banks will use XRP because it's the best liquidity pools and it's the best technology and it's the best, best, best. And we can see it's not using XRP. Fact. It's not using it. And they're also saying it's not about the banks. And yeah, it kind of was. So now XRP is saying, well, we'll come up with a stable coin. And then the question again arises, well, do the banks want to use the XRP stable coin or do they just want to make their own stable coin? Or are we going to have a CBDC? And we're at the point now, there's so much competition with so many different coins, whether it's the best coin in the world, which is XRP, air quotes, or a stable coin, or an existing stable coin, as in you've got to make your own stable coin, or just use an existing stable coin, or a CBDC. You can see that at the moment, there's just so much competition to have a stable coin or the, the if you will, the future of the SWIFT network. The SWIFT network are being moving value from one point to another point, typically in another country through a centralized body. But then we go back a step and people say to me, Adam, what will I do with my Bitcoin? How do I sell it to do this and that and to, to buy something in this? And like, how do I liquidate it? And I say, well, actually, in the future, if you're not going to borrow against your Bitcoin, and I think many people will, people will just accept Bitcoin. One of you out there did um, a private lesson with me recently, uh, and I won't mention your name, but you, you were actually surprised at the end of it. And as I say, if you work, for, if I work for you, you pay me in Bitcoin and we don't do a deal. And we did a private tuition lesson. And at the end of it, the customer's like, okay, well, 
um, what's your bank details or how do I pay you? And I, was, I said, no, clearly, <laughs> clearly you didn't read the MOU. The MOU says you pay me in Bitcoin. And it was a, a bit of res a little bit of a resistance at first. It's like, well, hang on a second, I've never really done this. I don't know if I want to pay you in Bitcoin. But when the person actually went through the process and paid me in Bitcoin, it's like, oh, well, that was pretty simple. It's like, yeah. And imagine if I was on the other side of the world, that would have been easier again. And by the way, the Bitcoin that that person has paid me in has gone up in value. If that person had paid me in the US dollar or the Australian dollar or whatever, all of that work I'd done, the value, the effort I've put in, it would have been declining in value because they would have paid me in a depreciating number that you can see on the screen here. But instead, I insisted that they paid me in Bitcoin. And as a result, the hourly rate that they've just paid me has now amplified because the value of that currency has gone up. And so the question is in the future, why would you actually sell out of your any coin to go into another coin to go into another coin and all that time you, you, you're dealing with slippage or you're dealing with exchange rates and you're dealing with fees why not just trade in whatever coin you want now it might be bitcoin it might be litecoin i keep talking about litecoin because with my international providers they want to be paid in litecoin i'm like cool it's fast it's easy and there's no transaction fees and then they pay their other people well there's transaction fees but they're so minuscule compared to other chains and then with other coins or with their other providers, they then pay their providers for whatever work they're doing for them in Litecoin. So where there's never an exchange to a stable coin or there's never an exchange to a whatever coin. And the thing is with exchanging to stable coins at the moment, most stable coins are linked to the US dollar. And as a result, they're, they are diluting. So let's say you've got Bitcoin and say, right, I'm going to put it in a stable coin just so I, it, I don't have to deal with the v volatility of Bitcoin. Okay. So you put it into a stable coin and you say, right, it's, it's stable. No, it's not. It's going down in purchasing power because of what you can see on the screen. It's constantly going down in value. So that's why we're looking at stable coins now being linked to different things. Maybe it could be linked to bottles of water or bags of wheat or barrels of oil or any currency in the world. But over time, it's like, well, actually, do I need to even use a stable coin? Because it's constantly going down. And it comes back to the big question, what is the anchor point? Carly McEwen says, hello, beautiful crypto family. G'day, Carly. And YouTube user says, what do you think Pepe will do? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's actually a really good question. Because if we go over to the big scary bubbles before we get into the news, you're looking at the monthly bubbles. And Pepe has cooled off a little bit. So Core's doing really well, up 279%. Maker, making a great comeback. And, and that's a big move for Maker. Why is that a big move for Maker? Because Make is a big coin to start with. This isn't a new coin. This isn't a meme coin. This I can remember when this coin first came out and it, it got all the way up into very good four figures, high four figure coin. And it's done 75% recently. That's a testament to the coin. Well done, Maker. Uh, I, I still remember when that came out and no, I didn't get any. Uh, Pendle is up 100%. A dark horse I gave you a while ago and BGB up another 38.4%. Uh, it's a good token. And I've told you about BitGet before. If you want to get some BitGet, what I would do is I'd come over to crypto.land. I would join down here where it says join BitGet. And there's so many bonuses if you use the link down here on the bottom left-hand corner. And if you get some BGB, uh, the coin itself, that's being the native token to the Bitcoin BitGet platform, I would suggest that it's going to do similar things to what the BNB coin did. Could it do the same? Uh BNB is pretty big. BNB is very big. But if it did half of what BNB did, even a third of what BNB did, then BGB is going to be a very, very good performing coin. And I, I called that out ages ago, and, and it's done very well ever since. Not because I called it out, but because the fundamentals were good. And uh, Jupiter's up 88%. Over the year, though, you can see uh, Bonk is still the biggest gainer. Insanity. <laughs> up 4,000%, 3,997%. And Pepe is kind of fading out because it did a massive run and then it pulled back. Look, I think it's going to do another 3x in the, in the next run. Things are just so crazy. Or is it the end of Pepe? Uh, I don't know. I made a lot of money off it. So <laughs> I've always got a great feeling with Pepe. Okay, over to the news. The first article today. I've got so many tabs open. Uh, where are we here? 
Top stories this week, Terraform Labs Doquan found liable for fraud in SEC case. The summary from Cointelegraph uh, magazine, I've left the link in the description below, reads, A jury found Terraform Labs and co-founder Doquan liable for defrauding investors, surprise, in its civil case with the US SEC, well, the United States Security and Exchange Commission. The SEC trial started on March 25, without the attendance of Quan, who remains in Montenegro, while courts decide whether to grant his extradition. According to the verdict, jurors found Quan and Terraform liable for six charges. They also determined that the platform acted recklessly in making false or misleading statements regarding the offer or sale of TerraUSD, Luna, or Doblet Wrapped Luna. So if you remember uh, in the article there, you remember Terra Luna? And old Quan, when he was going on many interviews, boy, wasn't he getting arrogant. So, you know, some people related to Sam Bankman Fried in many ways. It's not that Luna was an exchange. It was a it was a coin and there was and it had a stable coin. But with the Luna platform, there was ways of um, generating yield through their products. Whereas FTX was an exchange with lots of other add-ons to it. Now, both guys, well, hang on, one is definitely a criminal. I can say that openly because he went through, he was charged. He went in front of a court of law and he was found guilty and he's now in jail sentencing 20, for, sentenced for 25 years. Will that be reduced or appealed? Who knows? But at the moment, he's in jail for 25 years. Criminal, check. We're talking about um, old scam bankrupt, bankrupt fraud. Now we go over to old Kwani Do here. Old Quan, he has also been charged <laughs> for defrauding investors uh, and he's, he's facing or liable for six charges, whereas old uh, SBF was liable for seven charges, but then he had two more for perjury and tampering with witnesses. So that kind of went up to nine and he got 25 years. What's interesting with this, this one, though, is that Sam Bankman Fried was actually quite humble in front of the camera. Now, whether it was an act or whatever, who cares? The reality was he was very humble and kind and simple in front of the camera. Whereas old Kwon Do was very arrogant and difficult to watch. He was a really arrogant, I was going to say prick, but uh, we'll go with prick. Anyway, what's going to happen with him is I would suggest that he's going to be found guilty, I'm guessing. And I would suggest that he's going to go to jail because precedence has been set. Uh, but I don't think he will get as long as what Sam Bankrupt Fraud did. I think he'll get a lot less based on the the reach of the the extent of damages and the reach of um, his crime into different markets and the amount he he laundered or ripped off from people. Moving on. Good news story. We we're always talking about people going to jail here. Let, let's have a good news story. A trader turns $13,000 into $2 million within an hour as meme coin frenzy continues. Now, I'm going to read this article, but I want you all to remember, for every one guy or girl who turns 13K into $2 million in an hour, there's probably 50,000 people who do that, who do kind of the opposite. They turn 13K into 200 bucks in an hour. So please, it's a good news story, but don't just rush out and do what this guy did. A crypto trader turned $13,000 into over $2 million, a gain of 15000 700% on April 3 by investing in the novel meme coin, Donoff, hang on, what is it called? Donot for meow. <laughs> I do not FOMO, hang on, I, I, should, I don't know them all. I think it's do not FOMO you. Do not FOMO EW with a code of MO you. Minted on the base blockchain. Oh, there we go, kids. It was minted on base. The cat-themed Moyu, not Meow, it's Moyu, M-O-E-W, meme token was created early in the day by a BitGet wallet. There you go. <laughs> so all these um, platforms are coming together. Shortly after, its debut on DEXs, however, Mayu surged in value and currently commands a market cap, oh God, of $31 million. More than 8,000 addresses have received Moyu. Um, tokens during the ongoing airdrop which is eligible for users holding the bwb po enough bwb points okay so just fun fact do you know how long it would take to build a company to be have a market cap or a value of 31 million dollars and here we have it's done in 
pretty much an hour or so. Now, of course, there's a lot of work in the background. But people get angry at meme coins. I keep saying it. Do not get angry at meme coins. It, it's just crypto. It's like, I don't know, Blasphemous Libel, our rock and roll representative out of there. If It's like going to a rock concert and getting really angry at the loud music. It's like, dude, it's part of the concert. <laughs> if you're going to go to a rock concert, you're going to have loud music. And if you're going to go into the crypto land, you're going to have stupid returns from arguably stupid coins. And it's one thing for the outsiders to get angry at it, but it's another thing when you're on the inside and you're like, oh my God, how dare this happen? It's like, dude, you literally went to a rock concert and there's loud music there and you're like, oh, these kids have got the music too loud. Then you come into the crypto land and you see some trader turn 13 grand into $2 million in an hour on a bloody meme coin that I couldn't even say until I broke it down. Do not FOMO meow. It's not, I can't even say it. Can someone help me with saying this coin? It doesn't matter. There's going to be more. There's going to be so many, and I can't know them all. And you know what? You can't know them all either. There's too many. It's like saying, I know every website in the world. Nah. I think there's like 3.1 billion websites. Hang on. Let's check. How many websites are there in the world? There are... My, this one says 1.11 billion. Where did I get 3 billion from? Now we'll go, how many cryptos are there in the world because they're, they're being pumped out so quickly how many cryptos are in the world uh around four, four my, really there are around 420 million oh my god 420 million cryptocurrencies across the globe and approximately eighteen thousand businesses now accept a form of crypto as payment now that goes from explodingtopics.com i'd have to do more research to substantiate that but according to the first source that came up on a very loose, random Google search, 420 million cryptocurrencies. So here's the thing. If we've only got 1.1 billion websites, there's going to be more cryptocurrencies than website within a few years. And the web, the internet has been around for, I don't know, over two days. <laughs> How long has <laughs> the uh, world wide web been around there you go so the world wide web has been around it's from 1989 so i went 1991 it went public <laughs> so we're looking at about 30 years of the world wide web right is that about right public maths yeah about right so within half of that time we're going to have more cryptocurrencies than websites and the data gets pretty loose so what does it mean you can't know them all and don't be hard on yourself uh, when you can't keep up with it all that's why many people say no just find a, a few coins and focus on those ecosystems and, and it kind of makes sense because it's so difficult to to track it all and understand it aussie cash only says hi and glad i hope all is well with you yep all is great thank you so much just not getting enough sleep luke herschel says g'day adam it's fair to say btc has reached all-time high when g'day adam is it fair to uh great question luke great question is it fair to say btc has reached an all-time high when you adjust for inflation? Great question. No, it's not. It's not. If you adjust for inflation, we haven't reached an all-time high. I agree with that uh, suggestion entirely. So what you want to do then is you want to calculate the inflation over the last four years and say, are we really at an all-time high? But you know what? The same is for your, your house or anything. Is your house really worth that much or is it just that everything has been inflated to the point that you need so much money to buy a house? Here's where I could counter it i can show you on a chart you need far less bitcoin to buy a house now than you did in the past and if you reverse it you need far more fiat to buy a house now than you did in the past yeah really good question it's so difficult to, to um, establish an anchor point of where the value lies uh brady m says craig Patton says i hope you're dca buying bitcoin i do as well ak says a slip of a vow apologies that's all right okay you were talking about buenos uh, not chess, but it's not, not chess. Yeah, not not chess. <laughs> Jason Friskin says, just wondering, Uncle Adam, what do you think future BTC bull runs will look like? Re I read on an article today, uh, the Daily Hoddle. Oh, careful with that. That this would be the last one. Sounds a bit dramatic, to be honest. Okay. Some people say this is going to be the super cycle, and they say it's a super cycle, and it's just going to go up and to the right forever. And you say, well, how is that possible? The two charts that I your homework. So, so what happens, I'll go back a step. 
So Bitcoin typically runs in a four-year cycle. It does a massive run-up and then it pulls back. Then it does a massive run-up and then it pulls back. And then it does a massive massive run-up and then it pulls back. As each cycle goes by, the pullback is not as violent. It doesn't pull back as far. And arguably, the percentage gains don't go up as high. It's still constantly up and to the right, but it becomes less volatile over the four-year cycles. I see the super chat. I'll get to that in a second. Thank you so much. What actually happens, though, is that they're saying is that this could, and many people have said it, and no one knows. So we'll just go through the, the theory. The theory is that this will be the last massive run of its type. And what, what we mean by massive run is that it'll go from like, you know, what are we, 70 grand to potentially half a million. We'll talk about that in an article a bit later. But then from then on, instead of having the massive four-year flatness and then run up and then pull back, and then the run up and then the pull back, it will just track up and to the right forever well for a long time and if you say well that's impossible that won't happen the two charts i want you to look at is you want to look at apple and you want to look at amazon and many experts are saying that bitcoin will now couple the pattern of amazon or apple which is essentially just up and to the right sure there's little pullbacks and it's not just a straight diagonal line and you know, even at one stage i think amazon had a 50 percent correction but then it recovered very quickly and it and i'm not talking about the big 98 percent in the early days and there's a lot of theories that because all the institutions are in this now and this halving takes us down to three let about three bitcoin 3.135 bitcoin per 10 minutes they say it's just up and to the right from here and when we talk about a super cycle on one state on one hand it says right it's going to go really ballistic this time and it's just not going to do a four x it could do a 10x or a 20x but then the other argument is, well, maybe it won't do it like that, but it will just it won't pull back. It'll just keep going up and to the right. Um, I only roll my eyes at the daily hodl because back in the day, and maybe I should get over it. Maybe I should let go of my hate of the daily hodl. Years and years ago, they've been around for years. All they would ever talk about was XRP. That's all they ever spoke about. You'd, you'd open it up. And it, hang on, just to be clear, so I don't get sued here. It wasn't the only thing that they'd talk about. But there'd be like 12 articles for the day, the daily hodl, and 10 of them would be about XRP. And 10 of them would just be like, XRP this, ripple that, XRP this, ripple that. And none of it came true. And it was so obvious that they were receiving payments to talk about these, these coins. And anyone who would have read the daily hodl and follow that bonk just crossed the 4,000% mark for the year. Well done, bonk. Um, anyone who have read that, they would have believed that, you know, XRP was going to go fully sick. And the XRP army still believe it. And hopefully I'm, and I don't believe it, but I do have a big bag of XRP. So I can't lose. If it goes to zero, I'll just say to the XRP army, as I was saying. And if it does half of what it's supposed to do, it's not even anywhere near it. And the XRP army gets angry at me. I'll say, well, I just made a lot of money off it. So because I don't um, discriminate against profits. But the truth is the daily hodl was well overrepresenting XRP. And as a result, I just never go to the daily hodl anymore. But the art article about a super cycle, and this could be the last uh, run of its type where it goes up and then just goes up and to the right, could be true. And again, my homework for you to give to you is look at the Amazon chart and look at the Apple chart and many believe that's what the Bitcoin chart will do. Okay, we've got a super chat here. Super chat takes priority. Uh, Bax BTC. G'day Bax BTC. Haven't seen you here before. He says topping up the beer glasses fund. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it has been a while. He says topping up the beer glass fund. It's been a while Stokesy. I do recall you but you've changed your icon. Um, good to see you're still at it. Thank you. What a rough bear market. Those BTC DCAs are doing wonders. Good stuff. Stay humble and stack stats, everyone. Cheers to everyone's success. Bax BTC. Uh, Baxi, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. And you're dead right. Dollar cost averaging over, over all of these years has just paid off immensely. Uh, Dean Kokowski says, Adam, after this bull run, where do you rotate your money into? Real estate, S&P, thanks, brother. Okay, not financial advice. Number one. No debt, no debt at all. So if you, you don't want any home loans, any credit card, just I'm not financial advisor or planner. I'm just randomly thinking zero debt, no student loans. Most of you shouldn't have student loans, no credit card, no 
house loans, no car loans, nothing. And you say, well, hang on, I can offset it. Yeah, you can, you can get debt later. You can always, get, if you've got no debt and you've got lots of capital assets and you've got good cash flow, you, you can accumulate more debt later. But if you can come out of this cycle with zero debt and a lot of capital assets, and on top of that, if those capital assets such as houses or uh, positively yielding bonds or de de derivative paying sh shares, if they're all generating cash and you've got a lot of assets, you can get more debt later, no problem. But if you come out of this bear cycle with no debt and a lot of capital assets, to answer your question, I would suggest for myself, more property that's generating yield, uh, zero debt and future-proofing myself. And how do you future-proof yourself? Don't buy stupid cars that are gonna cost a lot to run. Don't get massive houses that you can't afford to heat or cool in a location that has a lot of rates. Uh, so you might want to look at batteries for your house with solar panels and helix wind tur turbines and um, very efficient homes where it, it doesn't really cost much to run it. And you say, well, hang on, if I'm really rich, what does it matter? It's like, nah, you don't get rich by blowing money. You get rich by saving it and investing it in the right things. Hextoshi PLS motto says, hey, Stokesy and everyone, looking forward to catching you live. Appreciate um, you as always, we all miss you on Wednesday when Brunkle launched. Yeah, it, it didn't feel right. I really did feel, I felt like I'd done something wrong by not coming on Wednesday. I'm glad you felt it as well. <laughs> YouTube user says, are the chooks based on a certain people? Nope. No, they're not. Oh, hey, Was, how are you going? Oh, is, it, is that you, Was? <laughs> was that? If, if you're who I think you are, instead of saying YouTube user, <laughs> You could actually put your name there as was, and you could even put an icon of yourself. Um, John, John, Johnny, John, John says, no Dobie on book cover, Adam. No. So great question. The reason why I don't have Dobie on the book cover is because Dobie didn't exist in this journey. Remember, Dobie is very young. And this whole journey here with, um, with Clucky, she wasn't in it for pretty much all of it. So the story kind of ends before I even got Dobie. Maybe a part two will include Doby. I appreciate you asking that, John, John, Johnny, John, John, John. <laughs> I love saying your name. Solar Roller Triple Eight says, for your storybook, any chance to put some Where's Wally, uh, Wally-esque Easter eggs? Look, I would not now. I, I tell you why. I'm saying I'm having so much trouble getting the illustrator and publisher, not publisher, the illustrator to finish even minor tasks. I would hate to do anything else. I'm going to release a book and I'm definitely going to do a version two. Blasphemous Libel says, please make an adult kids. <laughs> I love you, bro. He says, please make an adult kids book like Go <laughs> Go the F to Sleep by Adam Mansbach. Oh, I love it. Go the F to Sleep. I, I, I know what you're talking about. Solar Roller 888 says, um, but the bearable guy bear in there. Uh, Craig Patton says, I love that you made a children's book, Adam. Please let me know when it is finished. I look forward to reading it to my daughter. Yeah, I, I will. And I please ask any of you who've got kids and even for yourself, instead of getting the digital book, buy the physical book. Look, I'm not going to make it very expensive. I'm, I'm going to obviously make a couple of bucks per copy. But buy the book so you can just read a real book to your children, please. And it's a good story. I mean, I'm biased, but it's a good story. And if it wasn't for Evan Floyd... And believe it or not, my hairdresser, when you say, what are your hairdressers? So when I go to like, <laughs> and she only does back and sides type of thing, I tell her this story and she was infatuated with this story. And she's like, you have to make a book about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll probably do. And then because Evan Floyd always makes me talk about it with the guests. I'm like, yeah, I'll make a, a children's story book. It, it's not as easy as you think. You think, oh, just, it's just a children's story. But no, you got to illustrate it. you got to lay it out. Then you got to publish it. it. It can be done. It's just a, a bit of a pain in the backside. Okay. So we've got here, Dean Kokowski says, Adam, any thoughts on block square? Yes. Great question. During the week on Thursday, it should be Thursday. I will be interviewing someone from block square. Great question, Dean. We're talking about real world assets. Join me on Thursday where I'll be speaking to the CEO or partner of the CEO as a not romantic partner, one of the heads <laughs> of block square. Cause I want to learn more about it. I think it's a great project. I, I think it's I've already given it to you as a dark horse, but I think it's got, it's going to go ballistic. Benny O says, good evening, Adam, all in Adam. I hope you're all well. I was just listening to uh, Jekyll Island. Yeah. How the hell is the U S still functioning as an economy and as a country? I'll tell you corruption, read the creature from Jekyll Island, but we're all intertwined in it. So it's not just America. We're all part of it. It's, 
it's insane. Now, here's a good point here. So Corbin Dallas says Grayscale can only sell once. So we're talking about Grayscale dumping all of its BTC. There's only so much you can dump. And at the moment, I would suggest that when you look at the, the technicals, why isn't Bitcoin pumping yet? It's really because Grayscale continues to sell. And they can only sell so much. That is, they're selling quite aggressively. But it's it's dragging the price down. It's really, I wouldn't say it's dragging it down. It's almost stabilized. It's like this massive tug of war at the moment. But once Grayscale stops selling the amount of Bitcoin that it's selling at the rate that it's selling, it's to the moon, baby. It's to the moon. And and you know what I'm happy with? People get upset with the um, GBTC selling all of their Bitcoin. No, no, no. I'm glad they're doing it now. Because once it's done, and, and they're running out of Bitcoin, they've still got heaps, but they, they were selling, what are they selling, like 300,000 a day? No, 300 million a day. I, I, it was, I got a 300 million, must be $300 million a day that they were selling. But the other uh, investors, the other ETFs, they're buying way more Bitcoin. Just BlackRock in itself was buying, I think it was almost triple the Bitcoin that was being mined every day. So just one ETF was buying nearly triple the amount of Bitcoin that was being mined daily. And we haven't even spoken about the other nine ETFs, plus all the ones globally, plus the retail investors, plus the institutional investors, plus the El Salvador's. And I'm sure there's countries buying it in the background, but we just don't know about it. And the only thing that is suppressing that price is that Grayscale is releasing, selling so much of their Bitcoin. It, it seemed insane to me to... Like Grayscale made the move and they got in there early and they got heaps of Bitcoin. Why are you dumping so much now? Now, the argument is maybe because they have to, you know, they've made profit. So they've got to sell. They bought low. Now they're selling high. They're doing what fund managers sh should do. They're, they're making profits and giving it back to their customers. But what I also think that could be happening, I actually had this thought experiment whilst washing my car the other day. I thought, well, maybe Grayscale is simply dumping all of their Bitcoin so BlackRock can scoop it up. And even if it results in Grayscale going bust, it doesn't really matter. It's not like Grayscale is a human being that then dies. It's just a board of directors who, who have been told, maybe, and it's just a thought experiment, so I don't know, that it's like, right, BlackRock, big brother BlackRock needs that Bitcoin. What we need you to do is we need you to sell it, and you will sell it because you'll be selling at a profit. And then if you follow what we say, we'll give you a job on the board or a cushy job over here at BlackRock. And then eventually Grayscale crumbles and just collapses and BlackRock just gets bigger and absorbs this massive company as I do with lots of other companies. And you say, well, why would Grayscale do that? You know, they've got their own brand to protect. No, it's just a company. It's not like a living organism. It's not like I am Grayscale. It's just people and a board of directors and a CEO. And if they get the opportunity to return profits to their customers and then get a golden handshake with the company collapsing, therefore they get their payout. And then they get another good job over at BlackRock. To me, that kind of makes sense. Again, it's just a thought experiment. I don't know and I can't substantiate what I'm saying. Just that, why would you sell so much of your Bitcoin gray, um, grayscale? Like, why so much? Especially now, it's everything shows us. Before, before the halving, before the halving, why would you dump so much? So much. And in my mind, it's because of what I just described. Someone else behind closed doors has said, we need your Bitcoin. Get rid of it. We'll buy it. Trickle it into the market so we don't spook the market entirely. And then when you collapse, you'll get the golden handshake and you get a new job here. And then we'll all live happily ever after. And BlackRock gets bigger again. Uh, Steve J says, Adam, uh, BTC four-hour chart possible ascending triangle. Yep, let's look at the four-hour chart from our guru out there. Oh, absolutely. There you go. That looks very good. Okay, so you're now looking at Bitcoin to four Bitcoin to US dollars in four hourlies. And what Steve is saying, I'm just going to do this very quickly here. He's saying that well seen there. Uh, and then he's saying that. Yep. Yeah, I'm seeing that too. The market's looking very bullish. Uh, 
Moving further on, Tintop says, what's up, Hexicans? Eyes on Ty says, Crypto Granny waving from Thailand. G'day, Crypto Granny. Greg Coombs, sorry, says, hey, I'm Greg from Panama. Finally back in Australia, loving the crypto summary. Good stuff. Welcome back. How is Panama? Wolf says, XRP already acts like stablecoin. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, look, that's a fair call. And, and to be fair, also, to keep it balanced, so does ADA. Like, it's almost like... And, and for the record, I love ADA way more than XRP, but I've got to call it how it is. And you know I'll try my best to keep it real. Look at the price of ADA and XRP. You've got $0.59 cents versus $0.59, cents, and both of them have been around that price for months. Oh, yeah, there's a little movement here. No, 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 no. They've been around the $0.60 cent mark for months, coupled for ages. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If Cardano doesn't make its move this cycle, I think it's pretty much done. And for the record, Cardano is my second biggest holding. Bitcoin's my biggest holding. My second biggest holding is ADA. But that number's starting to shift as some of my other holdings are just making so much more profits that the, the profitability of ADA is starting to go down so much as the other coins go up. And I'm not upset about it. You can hear it. I'm laughing because it's like, oh, well, I didn't go all in and any of them. The reason why I've got a lot of ADA is because I love ADA. I interviewed Charles Hoskinson and I got a lot of it at a very cheap price, but then I staked it for a long time and I compounded the staking. And as a result, I've got crap loads of ADA. But it's not about me having crap loads of ADA. It's about, will it break out this time? I hope to see ADA go to $5 this cycle. That's a 10X from it, just about a 9X from where it is now. But when, you, when you've got Solana doing what Solana's doing and Ethereum with its market dominance and Avalanche doing so well with the big boys, come on, Ada. Even Dot is doing pretty well at the moment. Dot's at eight bucks. The supplies are very different. But if Ada, in my opinion, if Ada doesn't do it this run, it's over. And I would suggest the same as for XRP. And just to put it out there, I'd probably say the same for Hex. Oh, shots fired. Oof, you've started a fight. Bax BTC. Yeah, your boy Stokesy. How are you, Baxi? You just changed your logo back. Now I reckon Molly's. That's your old logo. Um, Baxi says, Bitcoin only homies, stack sats. Hope you're all bags pump. Well said. Um, Bax BTC says, Stokesy is an OG with sound advice. Thank you, Baxi. Jeez, it's been a while, mate. It's good to have you back. Where have you been? Uh, Brady M says, another BTC, Maxi, Baxi. Yeah, so Brady and Baxi, you can be mates. He says, we are slowly overtaking. Everyone gets it eventually. Why waste time on shit coins when you can stack the most pristine asset in 10 years you'll have to work for um you'll have to work for btc look it, it, brady I've, we've gone through this before <laughs> and I'll, I'll go through it again why do you buy shit coins because it gives you huge amounts of opportunity to make so much money to get more bitcoin than you could with your dirty fiat in fact when i really think about it the crap coins have given me so much opportunity to make more Bitcoin. Without that, I probably wouldn't have as much Bitcoin as I've got now. So don't, I mean, you do you, bro. You do you. But if you play these games right, you don't fall in love with the shit coins. You literally go in there <laughs> and you pump and dump them. <laughs> you, you, you ride them to the top and then you dump them and you take your money and you put it into Bitcoin. And then you do it with the next coin and the next coin and the next coin and the next coin. And you don't fall in love with them. You don't get emotional. You just make a crap load of money and then you put it into the best asset in the world. So you and I meet halfway on this. The best performing asset in the world and the best coin in the world is Bitcoin. You'll never get convinced me otherwise. But where you and I see differently is that I say, no, 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 don't. Don't fall in love with just Bitcoin and say, no, I'm only loyal to you. I will only invest in you. If you know how to swing trade, if you know how to calculate your risk, if you know how to time the markets, man, get out there and catch these sick waves, make huge profits, sell your position, pay off your house, go on a holiday, get rid of your credit card debt, look after your friends and get more Bitcoin. You can't do that just dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. You can't. You, you can't do it. Unless you're dollar cost averaging, well, and now, even then, I was going to say, if you're dollar cost averaging $50,000 a day, but you couldn't because you're not selling it. You're, you're not going to sell the Bitcoin. You buy the Bitcoin to hold. There's two markets in my mind. You've got the, the BTC market, 
which is currently 51.78% of the entire market. And then you've got everything else. They are two separate markets doing two completely different things. B Bax BTC says, definitely guilty of the crypto casino, but I don't discriminate. Good, he says, on people trying to make a bag in crypto, as long as they know the difference between BTC and the rest. Well said, Baxi. So you, Baxi, you, you and I are totally synergized here, totally synchronized here. You, you get it. It's like, yeah, there's two markets here. As long as you know the difference, there's Bitcoin and there's everything else. And one of you even said to me, Adam, I want to learn how to swing trade. And I said, and I won't say who you are, but it was a good conversation. And I said, look, you're doing really well here, but if you're going to swing trade, just make me a promise. Don't leverage or swing trade Bitcoin. Do it in the other million coins you got out there, but not with Bitcoin. And he, he agreed to that. I've got no control over him, but he agreed to that. He goes, all right. I'll only swing trade. And this is a different friend to what I was talking about at the beginning of the video tonight. Yes, Adam has two friends. <laughs> uh, but the, the friend I was talking at the beginning of the video, that was years ago. But the friend I'm now talking about, this was just in the last few months. So two different markets, Bitcoin and everything else. Next story. Back over to the news summary. So now we're talking about the Bitcoin 5% flash crash leads to $165 million in leveraged crypto liquidations. So perfect segue into what I'm saying. Don't swing trade Bitcoin. Don't You don't have to do what I say. I'm just some random dude on the internet. Don't put your leverage trades on Bitcoin. Leave it alone. Dollar cost average Bitcoin and do all the crazy stuff <laughs> in the rest of the crypto land. I was going to use a really, really inappropriate analogy then and I just bit my tongue. Uh, it had to do with dating and night clubbing. You figure it out. A sudden 5% drawdown of the, in the price of BTC on April 2 has seen traders with leverage exposure to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies rack up over $165 million in losses in less than two hours. Let me say that again. If you had leverage, ex leverage exposure to Bitcoin, says and other cryptocurrencies but more than 50 percent in bitcoin 165 million dollars it was experiencing losses in less than two hours bitcoin plunged subjective five percent from 69 grand to 65 grand in less than 30 minutes yeah that's i'll give that as a plunge in 30 minutes that's pretty fast um according to trading view data which is the data we're looking at here now just to be clear when we go to trading view data at the moment i'm now looking at binance data and if I bring up all of this, I can go to Coinbase data, um, Bitfinex data, Kraken data, all, all these different data sets. So there's not, again, there's not one single source of truth. And so when that article says, according to tradingview.com, it's like, well, tradingview is just reading data from different sites. So that, that even that reference is a bit how you're going. There's no single source of truth out here. Uh, according to the data from Coinglass, there you go, Bitcoin's sharp wick down saw more than $165 million in leveraged positions wiped out with just over $50 million in Bitcoin longs and more than $40 million in Ether. So $50 mil in ETH, $40 mil in Ether. And these are all long positions uh, accounting for the bulk of that figure. Roughly $6 million in long positions on Dogecoin, crikey, and $4 million in Solana Sol were liquidated trailing BTC and ETH. So the main losses there were Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, and Solana. Millions wiped out in two hours. Now, I'd just like, here we have uh, Shamin Mossav, old Shirin. She's, she's the chief investment officer of Goldman Sachs. And she's seen here quoted in a cartoon, uh, we're not believers in crypto. So this is one of the quotes for the week because when you're the chief, oh my God, I'm thinking about what I'm just saying here. You are the chief investment officer at Goldman Sachs. And she says, we're not, <laughs> we're not believers in crypto. You, you, let me put this in context. That's like someone 30 years ago saying, we're not believers in the internet. Or imagine, hang on, I'll make it even more refined. If you're a communications company, and your whole business is about transferring information from point A to point B, and you were to come out publicly and say, we're not a believer in the internet, how do you think that person's future went? So now old Shamin Mosavara Ramani has come out publicly and said, we're not believers in crypto, and you're the chief investment officer at Goldman Sachs. Farewell to your future career. You'll probably get paid out millions of dollars just for holding the position. Insanity. These people are 
they're creating history of stupid quotes. It's like, you know, there's a whole page of quotes. Maybe I can bring it up right now. Uh, famous quotes of uh, I don't know, turning your back on technology. Let, let's see if I can find something here. It's a pretty loose search. Um, there's a whole page. No, these are expired. Famous quotes turning your back on. Um, turn, quotes on not understanding technology. Oh, I shouldn't do this live. I'm sorry. No, I'll pull it up and we'll do it. On, I'll tell you what, I'll do it on the campfire. But there's, there's quotes like this guy says, why would we need telephones when we've got runner boys? Why the hell would we need a car when we've got horses and cars? Why would I need an electric train when I've got a steam train? Why would I need an aeroplane when I've got a boat? I mean, really, and that's where we are now. Why would I need crypto when I've got the dollar or a bank? And and that's what these fools are doing. That they're, they're just, and it's one thing if you're not into the financial sector, but when your job is chief investment officer at Goldman Sachs, and you say you don't believe in crypto, what do you mean you don't believe in crypto? Insanity. Moving on, Argentine government passes registration requirements for crypto firms. So we're moving forward in Argentina, where the government has begun implementing requirements for cryptocurrency exchanges to operate legally in the country. In a March 25 announcement, Argentina's Comisión Nacional de Valores, which uh, is Spanish, <laughs> said virtual asset service providers would operate in accordance with recommendations from the Financial Action Task Force. The implementation of the FATF requirement seems to have caused concerns about the future of digital assets in Argentina. Many users of Bitcoin payments app strike reported that the app no longer allows locals to send fiat back to their accounts. Interesting. Here I say, it doesn't matter. You won't need the fiat. You won't. So Argentina is sort of halfway there. Uh, an economy that's really struggling, addicted to fiat, but those at the top who can print more and get the most benefit of it, they don't necessarily want the uh, the future of money. But of course, the people who are hurting the most, they absolutely want the future of money. Moving on, BlackRock updates uh, Bitcoin ETFs and adds five to Wall Street firms. Global asset manager BlackRock updated its Bitcoin exchange traded fund prospectus on April 5, adding five major Wall Street firms as new authorized participants. Just keeps getting bigger. According to the document filed with the SEC, the new members include ABN AMRO Clearing, Citadel Securities, Citigroup Global Markets, <laughs> hang on, Goldman Sachs, what? <laughs> Didn't we just have a quote? Goldman Sachs, and here you've got just above it, Chief Investment Officer at Goldman Sachs says we don't believe in this. <laughs> and yet here they're being added to Bitcoin ETFs. Okay. Listen to what they, hang on, watch what they do, not what they say. It's the same with Jamie Dimon. We're not into Bitcoin. And if anyone invests in Bitcoin, I'm going to, I'll sack them. And in the meanwhile, they're stacking it in the back. Why, why is there this, this dissonance between what is said and what is done? It's because they're coming to the party late. And if they go out and tell everyone in the world and says, I'm Jamie Dimon, you should buy Bitcoin, the price is going to skyrocket. They don't want to do that yet. What they first do, as we saw with BlackRock, old Finky there, he went out and said, oh, no, no, it's Bitcoin bad, Bitcoin bad. And realizing Bitcoin good, Bitcoin good. And he's stacking all of these sats, well, he's stacking full Bitcoins, buying Bitcoins. And once he's got a big, fat, juicy pot of Bitcoin, then he submits his ETF. And then he goes to the public and says, I oh, know Bitcoin good. And why does he do that? Because now he's got a big fat bag of Bitcoin that he wants to pump. And it, it just keeps happening over and over again. These big financial companies say Bitcoin bad, Bitcoin bad. And they're like, hang on a second. This is the future of everything. They stack all the Bitcoin. They get all their prospectus and all their legal stuff uh, in place. Then they stand in front of the camera and say, oh, now you can buy it. Well, we've done all the testing. No, we've just stacked our sats. And now you, mum and dad, you can go out and then buy it. But here's the difference. You say, well, hang on, they're going to dump on my mum and dad. No, they can't. They can't because there's too much demand and they can't keep printing it. And everyone wants it. 
and there's so much competition and it's not just america and the us dollar is collapsing and the halving is coming up and we've lost about 6 million so there's only 13 million and we're running out of time and there's huge amounts of profits and it's better than gold yes it's better than gold it's the best performing asset in the world and you're going to see money trickling out of the gold markets into the bitcoin markets and the precious markets precious metal precious metal markets into the bitcoin markets and dare i say you may even see institutional real estate money trickling into the Bitcoin markets. Why? Don't have to pay land tax, don't have to pay rates, don't have to pay stamp duty, don't have to deal with tenants, don't have to get a hot water system. I don't have to have it stuck into the area of the government at the time. I can move it anywhere in the world because it is everywhere in the world at once. It's the perfect digital property. It's better than gold when it comes to financial markets. It's better than fiat. It's not one thing, it's everything. And all the big boys and girls, they get it. They now get it, but they can't tell you yet. It's not that they don't want to tell you. It's just that they don't want to tell you yet. They're going to stack all these coins and then they're going to say, now it's good. And it's already begun. It's already begun with BlackRock. And now we've got the big players coming there saying, right, now we've got to get onto it. Super. I'll just cl uh, close this article off. Among the previously authorized participants in the ETF are JP Morgan, which is J J Jamie Dimon. That's JP Morgan. Jane Street Capital, Macquarie Capital, and Virtue Americas. Oh, Bitcoin's not real. Okay. All right, mate. All right. My coin's better than your coin. All right, mate. All right. You go get your crap coin. <laughs> now, Brady, this is where we're coming together again. Bitcoin is everything for the future of the crypto markets. And both Brady and I split up here. There's still stupid opportunity like insane opportunity to make so much money in the altcoins elsewhere the only thing i advise you which isn't advice because what the hell would i know and i'm not a financial advisor or planner i'm just some random material on the internet don't fall in love with the coins if you're going to fall in love with a coin fall in love with bitcoin all the others pump and dumping they got nothing to do with you they don't love you you don't love them and as steve j says take your profits or i will when when this market pumps and I'm selling out of my meme coins and alt coins and smart coins, and I'm taking huge amounts of profits. I'll be telling you I'm doing it. But if you don't do it, and I take those profits because you didn't, I, I offer you no apology whatsoever. We are friends and we are family here. And I tell you what I'm doing and I tell you how to play the game. But when the time comes and you're sitting on millions of dollars and it's like, I should probably take some profits off the table. And you're like, nah, man, I'm writing this. And it's like, all right. If you don't take your profits, I will. I will take your profits. And I will offer you no apology whatsoever. Because you should know by now, you've been turning up, you've been doing the hard yards, you've been coming every week to listen to Uncle Adam Rand and the other channels. You've seen what's happened in the past. Now is the time to realize that, you know what? In a few months, I'm taking massive profits off the table. And if I don't, Uncle Adam will take them off me. Uh, we've got a super chat out there. Just bring up the crypto bubbles. Super chat. Takes priority. Backs again. No, we've got to go further down. Dan Harrison. He says, heavier than air flying machines are impossible. <laughs> so he's quoting. Thank you, Dan. I love it. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible. That's from Lord Kevin, physics president of the Royal Society, circa 19, 1895. That is brilliant. I love it. I absolutely love that. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for the super chat. Heavy than air flying machines are impossible. From Lord Kelvin, I said Kevin, Kelvin, physics president of the Royal Society. That is gold, Dan. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Not for the super, well, for the super chat yet, but that is awesome. Uh, Julia Maltezo says, hi, Adam and Crypto fam. Late to the show. How's Clucky doing? Hope you had a restful weekend. Yeah, funny story with Clucky. <laughs> I feel a bit bad. So I pick up Clucky. I, I pick her up often. And I pick her up to take a selfie with her, right? And as I do that, Dobie comes up behind and jumps up, not to not to bite her, but just to sniff her bum, <laughs> because that's what Dobermans do. And so Clucky looks back, and she looks down, and she sees this Doberman jumping up towards her, whilst this big beast of an owner is holding her. And she freaks out, and because it's now going from summer to winter, uh, fun fact about chickens, and I guess birds and maybe even dogs, they, they molt their existing summer feathers and then they change it to winter feathers <laughs> fun fact so when she sort of jumps out of my arms and goes kuh, 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 all of these feathers went everywhere i'm like in this big cloud of feathers 
And Dobie, bless a little heart, is like now trying to bite all of these feathers just for fun. And Clucky's running. I'm like, this chicken is too old <laughs> for, for this type of fear factor. And I'm thinking, please, Clucky, don't have a heart attack because Dobie went up to sniff your bum. <laughs> Chris says, good question, Dean Kikofsi. Where do you, would like to know, you're talking about, um, where do, where do you put your money? Look, future-proof yourself, no debt, real estate with positive yielding returns and something that generates an income. You might even look at good stocks that actually give you some good div dividends. Uh, Johnny says, crypto holder since 2014. You're in a good position, Johnny. Crypto, I wonder woman says, Adzi, Doby was, hang on, Adzi, Doby was there when Clucky was sick for weeks. She was nurse Doby. No, she wasn't. Sorry, Doby didn't exist. <laughs> uh, court case, bud. Uh, what court case? Uh, I've got to catch up. Grayscale have purchased XRP. How much did they purchase? Uh, Chris D says, guys, M. Um, hang on. <laughs> Neil Dennison says, BlackRock is the board. Borg. Uh, Star Trek. Chris D says, guys, help me out. What's the main reason why Australia has huge inflation? Money printing, yes. Yeah, of course. So we, we pick on America for money printing, but we're all the same. So why does Australia have huge inflation? Because we print money as well. We're no different. Where does Australia get its money from? It prints it. That's where it gets, it taxes its people, a portion, but it prints a majority. That's where it comes from. Uh, I think it sounds like you're having an argument with, or a debate with someone. Um, Ferrell says, paying back the stimmy checks, yeah, handed out during COVID. Qantas never paid back the support money. It, well said. They got banked record profits last year. We, the people, got ripped, bro. Well said, Ferrell. That's exactly what happened. You know, you said paying back the stimmy checks. No, that it's not that they're paying it back. It's that the effect of printing the money is now trickling through the economy. So when you when you print money, I've given this analogy before and I'll give it again. When you print lots amount of money or do anything to an economy, like you you pull the interest lever, you print more money, you pull the tax lever, you've got these big macroeconomic levers. I always remember this when I was doing my economics degree. I, I still remember his name my professor, Chris Orlich, he, he would stand in front of the auditorium and he'd say, governments have these big levers. And I, I remember it so clearly. He'd say, right, we're going to slow down the economy by increasing the tax or increasing the interest rate. And we're going to spread, um, speed up the economy by moving the money supply, which is pulling the interest rate or the tax rate. And that these big levers that governments pull, it affects the economy. But the economy is like a big aircraft carrier. You put in the control or even a cruise ship. And, you know, if I, someone says, right, Captain 15, or Captain goes, 15 degrees starboard. Ding, ding. Aye, aye, Captain, 15 degrees starboard. And they turn the wheel and guess what happens? Nothing. Absolutely nothing happens. And then within a few seconds or sometimes minutes, depending on the size of the ship, it starts to move. And then eventually it gets to where the captain wanted it to be. And what's happening now is that you're, why is all the inflation coming through? It's because of what happened with, well, years and years of printing, but it was sped up during COVID. And you're now starting to feel the controls that were put into the economic ship, if you will, now flow through to the system and you're now starting to feel it. And guess what? It's going to get worse because the full effect hasn't hit us yet. It still hasn't hit us. It's going to get way worse. Shane Parry says, has anyone received the meow airdrop on solana it's literal free money where, where can i receive it now you said meow but on this article it said mo you mo u m o e w which one i don't even know i'm gonna catch up red squirrel says there <laughs> there is no second best yeah that's coming from um what's his name sailor nick eddie bitcoin maximalism is crypto puberty i went through that phase but i've been a bitcoin uh pregnant pragmatist since 2019 jay says a need to use a layer two for bitcoin to transact can't keep paying seven bucks on btc fees yeah absolutely but it's the rock solid foundation without a foundation you know it's built a house without that foundation you are screwed guy says uh you second your second biggest holding is ada my biggest holding is hex i agree with what you said regarding the cycle yep so we're putting it out there if ada XRP and HEX don't make it this cycle. I just cannot see it coming back. And, and you might say, well, hang on a second. We'll come back. Like, how many cycles do you need? Especially you, Ada. Now, I, I feel like I absolutely have a right to say this because I love Ada. 
you didn't do it the last cycle. You haven't done it this cycle. You're going to do it next cycle. Well, how many cycles do you need? Just deliver. Meanwhile, Solana is charging forward. Pendle is charging forward. Tau's coming up the ranks. Bonk continues to go up more than 4,000% over the year. Insanity. Next article before we go into the crypto. Oh, hang on. We've got, do we have a super chat there? I think I saw a super chat. Super chat's take priority. Yes, we do. No, hang on. Going down. Nick Eddy. Nick Eddy says, uh, I've already said it. Are you, uh, sorry, Nick, you've paid me to say what I already said. He said, Bitcoin maximalism is crypto puberty. I went through that phase, but have been a Bitcoin pragmatist, pragmatist rather since 2019. IB19 says, I don't know what that means. Oof says, wait, inflation was made during COVID. The media told me it was Putin's fault. <laughs> no, that's right. It wasn't printing money. It was also because you went and bought a new car. You did inflation. It wasn't us who printed all the money out of thin air. No, no, no. It was Putin. No, no, it was Trump. Then it was Putin. Uh, no, no, it was you who bought a loaf of bread. You caused inflation. It's it's insanity. It is absolute insanity. John, John, Johnny, John, John, John says, Adam, do you believe the peak of the market will be in 2024 or sometime in 2025? Great question. It should be around December 2024 going off historical data so if we go on historical data the peak of the bull run be clear here everyone just on histo history it should be uh, and get a clinton could see here it should be around december 2024 peaking around december january based on past cycles but if we move into the super cycle then all bets are off it, it's who knows who knows but what i will probably be doing around the december january period that's when i'll start selling a lot of my alts liquidating a lot of the alts and getting a lot of profits off that it's exciting times ahead exciting times ahead now there is another one more article i want to read before we get into um the biggest gainers and losers and rankings then there's two more first of all big let's just talk about this one quickly because it's quite interesting bitcoin's 2028 halving so this isn't this one this is the next one bitcoin's 2028 halving price target is four hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. historical data suggests bitcoin's price rallied approximately 650 percent since the last halving of 2020 if history repeats bitcoin could reach four hundred and thirty five thousand dollars before the 2028 halving in my opinion that's a very conservative, very conservative forecast. Because as one of you just said, does that account for inflation? Look, if Bitcoin just sat still and did nothing and just held its consistent purchasing power, relative to the amount of money we keep printing, it'll easily get 435000 Easily. Easily. And I don't think it's going to have to wait till 2028. My prediction is it'll be a million dollars by then. But reading on. The 2024 Bitcoin halving will happen in less than three weeks. If historical chart patterns were to repeat, Bitcoin's current price of $66,000 at time of writing would reach $434,000 per coin by 2028. So in four years, we're looking at half a million dollars if it performs similarly to the current cycle. So only if it remains consistent. Nonetheless, Bitcoin's average price rallies fell by 45% each cycle to the current 4, uh, 658%. So we're talking about the super cycle. As I was saying at the beginning of the video, there's a belief, and I think it's a pretty fair belief, that after the next run, instead of it dropping 45%, it'll probably drop less, like much less, like, I don't know, 20%, and then continue going up well before the next halving. If this diminishing return trends repeats, Bitcoin will deliver 360% rally during the next cycle, resulting in a roughly $300,000 Bitcoin price at the 2028 halving. So it's a pretty loose prediction there, but based on where we are at the moment, keeping all things consistent, half a million dollars in four years. Now, j just a quick article here before I get into other stuff. Does everyone remember OneCoin? I, I think this is crap. The, the summary reads, one coin's legal boss gets four years jail for massive $4 billion crypto scam. Four years for $4 billion. 
The article reads, the former head of legal and compliance for the multi-billion dollar OneCoin fraud scheme has been sentenced to four years in jail after admitting she helped launder millions of dollars. In addition to her four-year jail sentence, Irina Dilkinska was sentenced to one month of supervised release and ordered to forfeit $111 million as restitution. Ripped off $4 billion has to give back $111 million. Let me say that again. Rips off $4,000 million, million, you know, $4,000 million, $4 billion, which is $4,000 million, and she's got to give back $111 million. Totally makes sense, right? United States District Court Judge Edgardo Ramos reportedly denied Dilkinska's request to avoid jail time and return home to care for young children in Bulgaria, of course. Pull the mum card. Look, I know I destroyed countless other mothers and fathers out there, and I know I destroyed the financial future of all of these other people and kids out there, but what's really important is that you let me go so I can look after my kids. Here's your $111 million back after ripping off $4 billion. And she gets four years in jail. Four years. Bernie Madoff apparently got like 150. I said 100 years last time, but one of you corrected me and said he got 150 years. And that was the biggest crime, uh, financial crime at its time. Then you've got scam bankrupt fraud. And he does a massive multi-billion dollar scam. And he gets 25 years. And one coin, do your homework on one coin. It was like a, a massive scam, a massive pyramid scheme, essentially. Buy into this. This is the next best crypto in the world. Give us all your money. And they all bought into it. Four billion dollars crypto scam, and she gets four years. Four. I mean, what the hell's going on here? Like in, in America, people are going to jail for a lot longer for a joint that that they're smoking themselves. Yeah, the, the marijuana laws have, have dropped down considerably in America. Not all states, but a lot of them. Got it. Absolutely. And one thing I noticed when I was in California recently, like I think it was November last year or September last year, walking along the beach in California, everyone's, well, not everyone, but it was everywhere. You could smell marijuana everywhere. It was insane. But before that, you could do, there's, there's cases of men going to jail for 10 to 20 years for a little bit of marijuana. Here you've got someone ripping off $4 billion and destroying countless lives, and she gets four years. And then you've got scam bankrupt fraud, doing the biggest fraud in history, and he gets 25 years. But then before that, Madoff got 150 years. H how do they work it out? Like, really? It's crap. It's crap. This crime does pay, kids. Shane Perry says, has anyone received... Uh, no, sorry, we're doing that. Moving further down. Benny O, Adam... Have you looked at Babylon? No, nope, haven't. BTC staking in a nutshell. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look into it because you, you can't stake Bitcoin. So because it's proof of work, it's not proof of stake. At its essence, it's different. But that's not to say you couldn't get returns on BTC. But I'd have to look into it. Just, just be careful. You can't stake Bitcoin because it's a proof of work coin. It's not a proof of stake coin. But there are ways of making returns on Bitcoin. So let me look into it. AK says, thanks, Uncle Adam. Guilty of that mistake. Took a short on the alt on the basis of a large head and shoulders pattern um, and did quite nicely. I sold out early and decided to flick it into BTC. Long $66,000. Ah, I, I hope you didn't. Um, does that mean you got short? You got liquidated. So I think you're thanking me. So you're thanking me when I told you don't leverage trade Bitcoin. I can't tell you what to do. I'm just some random dude on the internet. But I think you're confessing. Crypto confession, nothing like a good crypto confession. It sounds like that you actually longed it and then you got liquidated out of your position. You just don't play that game with Bitcoin. But hey, live and learn and crack on. There's still time to make money. AK says, Goldman Sachs and Diamond gaslighting everyone. Yeah, they are. They are. They're gaslighting everyone. AK says, sadly, debt has been compounded since August 1972, thanks to President Dick N., um, Neil Dennison says, Bill Gates once said, I can, uh, yeah, here we go. Really good, Neil. So we're talking about some, uh, Steve J says, technophobians. I like that. Technophobians. Neil Dennison says, Bill Gates once said, I can see no reason anyone would need more than 64K of memory. Wow. 64K. I don't, I don't even know anything I've got that's got 64K of memory. 
Like it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. And that was Bill Gates saying, I can see no reason why you'd need this much memory. And, you know, why would we need internet? Why would we need airplanes? Why would we need cars? Why would we need crypto? All right, mate. I'll see you when I'm driving the Lambo, figuratively. Big Bear's flight says the bear has re-entered the chat. It wasn't the same without you. Where have you been? Where's your hall pass? Um, let's go on to the crypto rankings. I'm sorry. There's so many great comments here. I want to include you all as much as I can, but <laughs> you know what? Uh, here's the thing. The issue about becoming bigger on crypto, and what if you actually said it to me the other day? You said it quite nicely. <laughs> you said it in a much nicer way than this. You said, I like that you're not so big in on YouTube because you've got time to talk to us all. And, but you said it in a way not like you're not big. And, and I'm actually cool with that. You know, I've got less than 30,000 subs. Which, and I'm at this Goldilocks point at the moment where I've got enough traffic to make uh, enough business for myself and enough, as in enough um, affiliate links through the site, enough YouTube revenue, enough exposure where I can get private tuition if I need to do it, enough uh, size if we were to get good interviews with good players out there. But I'm not too big yet where I simply can't respond to all of you. But I'm just starting to cross that that spot now where I'm saying no to private tuition, no to business opportunities with that, but I could take on if I was smaller because I'd have more time uh, and no to reading all of your comments. So I'm just literally running out of time. But as I get bigger, unfortunately, there's less of me to go around. Sounds a bit weird. If I get bigger, there's less of me. You know what I mean. Nick Eddie says, I'm no SBS SBF fan, but there is a valid argument that Bernie's sentence at his age would be excessive as Madoff died 12 years in. Okay, yeah. Effectively, he got a shorter sentence than SBF. Devil's advocate. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. That's a good point. Madoff died 12 years in, where SBF, it's, it's a fair point. You know, he's, he's, I think, we call him a kid, but I think he's 31. So he's going to come out at 56 if he does the full 25 years. That all those good years of your life, they're all gone in a cage. Crypto Cat Doge says, finally caught you live. Watch and replay every week. Good to have you here, Crypto Cat Doge. Welcome. And remember, if you're listening to me later, 1.5, 2.1.25, 1.5, 1 1.75, or two times speed for more crypto in less time. Univorce, it says, arrived late. Did you hear UK is making people register their chickens? Really? Ducks, geese, no matter how many you have. What? Six months jail or five month fine for non-compliance? They are up to something. Is that true? You got to register chickens in the UK. <laughs> the world's gone mad. Oh, God. Thank you, you new horse. Blasphemous Libel just need to set up Adam Stokes meet and greet at a convention center once you're too big. Yeah, you know what? And, and can you rock out for me when we're there? And sing me a song, Blue Head Land Wales. <laughs> I'd be 19. Statement BTC is a rich guy's game. Us plebs have to take larger risks to get ahead. I think that's a pretty fair statement as well. Except for the fact is, when you say it's a rich guy's game, remember, anyone can dollar cost average. I, I get what you're saying. You're saying if you want to make serious returns, you can't do it in Bitcoin now. I get it. Absolutely, I get it. But as long as we both agree IB19 is that you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. And I know you get it because you, you've been in the game for a long time. But so we're all clear. You don't have to buy a bit a full Bitcoin and anyone can put, well, I would assume anyone can afford to put $10 a month into Bitcoin. Just dollar cost average every week or day or month or fortnight, which is two weeks in my American friends. And anyone can play that game. Uh, Blasphemous Lava says, correction, blue head land whale swamp donkey. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting in trouble. AK says, great oxymoron. As I get bigger, there is less of me to go around. Yeah, it's true. Oh, we get to some deep stuff. Okay, over to the crypto rankings. I've had a big weekend. What You know what I did yesterday? Story time with Uncle Adam. I'll squeeze one in. Yesterday was the first day in months, possibly years, that I didn't turn on the computer. I had a full day of not using the computer. Guilty I use my phone because I use that a lot and I hate Apple with a passion. I'll do a full video on it. But I actually went into my man cave and my, my garage is glorious. My garage is like, it's like a half a million dollar garage. It's, it's awesome. And I pulled the old Corolla out, the old you know, Toyota Corolla. It was on trickle charge. I started her up, 
pulled her out, let her run for a few minutes or about 15 minutes, spent hours clearing out the whole garage, making everything perfect, mopped the floors, dusted everything, uh, even went up to the old mining rig up on the top floor of the garage, sorted heaps of stuff out, gave the Corolla a, a wash and a wax, even though she was already clean, but now she's even really shiny, put it back in and it was a great sense of satisfaction. If you're ever not sure what to do, you're a bit stressed, just clean up a bookshelf, clean up a bedroom, clean up something in your lounge. And I don't mean clean by just tidy. I mean, literally pull everything out, throw out heaps of crap, donate heaps of stuff, sell heaps of stuff, put it all back together. And it's the best feeling. And of course I was listening to even music, Blasphemous Live, you like that? I listen to music in the background and of course a few YouTube videos. AK says, real wages haven't gone up in comparison. I was advised not to sell my soul to the devil and get a mortgage, but I did 41 and a half years ago. Wow. Thank you, AK. In hindsight, the repayments are less than the bloody rent price. Wow. Wow. Thank you for your confession. Roy Rays. Hey, Roy. He says, evening, boss. All coins are cool, actually. It's the entry. Good reminder not to get married. Yes. Or maybe... Um... <laughs> This is what I was going to allude to. Roy says, or maybe stick to the legal wife and play around with the rest. What is your legal wife? Is it BTC, PLS, or Doge? Yeah. That was something I was going to refer to before. Yeah, like If you want to use relationship stuff, you're loyal and married and serve BTC. And if you want to be a bit cheeky, you go out into the other markets and have your fun with those kids, girls, boys. Whatever you're into, not kids. <laughs> God, I get late. Don't have fun with kids. Don't have fun with kids. Unless you're blowing big scary bubbles in the pool. And people get that. All right. Oh, going live. Quick, get out of the hole. Eject, eject. That's your fault, Roy. Over to crypto rankings, Bitcoin 1, Ethereum 2, Tether 3 with BNB at 4. Solana at 5 and USDC at 6. XRP slipping down further to 7. Lido staked Ether at 8. Doge at 9, Cardano 10, Toncoin looking strong at 11, Avalanche also looking strong at 12, Shiba Inu 13, Bitcoin Cash 14, Polkadot 15, Wrap Bitcoin at 16, and Tron, the old Tron at 17. Get out of Tron. Can't tell you what to do. I just get the hell away from that. Chainlink at 18, Uniswap 19, Polygon Matic 20, Internet Computer 21, and with Litecoin holding steady at 22. How many coins outside the top four have you seen hold so steady in their position for so long? There's two. Litecoin at 22 and Ethereum Classic at 27 or 28. I haven't seen it yet, but let's see. Ethereum Classic, and we're going down the list together, should be around 27 or 28. But Litecoin holding strong at position 22 with almost no movement. Litecoin is almost a stable coin in itself. Near Protocol 23, Aptos APT 24, Leo Token 25, Dai 26. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Ethereum Classic at 27. Those are the two most stable coin positions, excluding the top three, or even four if you want to count BNB. The two most stable coin positions in all the rankings is Litecoin at 22 and Ethereum Classic at 27. Sometimes Ethereum Classic goes to 28, but there it is. Ethereum Classic at 27. Stacks moving up to... Uh, the, Pull back a little bit at down 7.9%. Stacks at 28, but holding steady at, sorry. Stacks moving up at 28, pulling down 7.9%, but holding steady in the top 30. I'm really dehydrated. Filecoin at 29, Mantle at 30, Cosmos Hub Adam at 31, with Arbitrum. Arbitrum losing another 11%, down to 32. Kronos, CRO, you're at 33. Immutable X, 34. Stellar XLM, the cousin to XRP, you're at 35. Need water. Uh, Render, Jay's coin, you're at 36 with the Vitenzo at 37. And there it is, dog with hat, losing 21% over the last seven days, but still at position 38. Be careful with that coin. Hedera H bar 39 and a stable coin, first digital USD at position 40. Over to the biggest gainers and losers. The biggest gainer over the week is Core again, again, 56.8%. And there's your second biggest gainer of Bit BitGet token, BGB, up 23.8. Core, up 56.8, and BitGet, up 23.8. If you want BitGet, head over to the crypto.land, join BitGet here, get your bonus. And, and it's a good exchange. There's a lot on there. There's a lot happening. It does a lot of stuff. In my opinion, 
and in my experience, it's kind of competing with Binance. You remember Binance does kind of like everything? It's kind of what Bit BitGet does. If it's all too much, just use a broker. And remember, if you want to trade without using any KYC, and I, that means know your customer, that is not entering any of your personal data or information, head over to BitUnix. It, it's a cool site. BitUnix is an easy site to use. It, it's cool. It's based in Dubai. And they've just said, like, we're going to make a crypto platform that you don't need to put KYC in. And they've got a lot of coins there, and it does a lot of stuff. You can spot buy, you can leverage trade, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but without a doubt, the number one platform in Australia is CoinSpot. For my internationals, I would be using uh, BitUnix or BitGet. Uh, and if you just want to use a broker, come over and use our broker. Click on this and he'll take care of everything for you. Shout out to Bish. The second, the third biggest gainer is eCash, XEC. You're up 19.4. And Bitcoin Cash. I, I told you ages ago. That's a 5X coin. You're starting to lose some of those Xs because it continues to go up. Why is it going up? Because newbies are coming in and they're buying at the cheaper Bitcoin. The other thing that's coming is happening is people like me who are not, and you, who are not new newbies, you understand that people come in and they're like, well, they're going to buy this. So you know what? I know the newbies are going to do it and I know the experienced people are going to do it. So I'm going to do it. The price is going to pump and then it's going to dump, but I'm going to dump it before it... it I'm going to dump my position before it dumps on me. Um, Steve J. Sorry, we love our comments from Steve J, but I've got so many I don't get to go through them all. Steve J says, the lies are as infinite as the print and stimulus. Beautiful. Therefore, the price of BTC is infinity, for we are printing a finite asset with infinite imaginable and print. That's That's awesome. Let me read it again. So this is why Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin, is infinite. And remember, the Simpsons predicted it because they, the Simpsons had an episode where they had a ticker on the news in the background, and they showed the price of Bitcoin as infinity. And you say, oh, you know, it's just silly. No, no, no. There's a lot of depth to it. And the reason is, is for what Steve has just said here. The lies are as infinite as the print and stimulus. Therefore, the price of BTC is infinity. For we are pricing a finite asset with an infinite imagination and print. Perfect. That's right. That's why the price is infinite. Because we keep comparing it to something that is unlimited. We're comparing a finite asset with an infinite asset. Beautiful, Steve. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Flare is the next biggest gain, up 9.9. .9. Mantle up 7.1. Potenzo, well done, up 5.9. It's still below the $600 mark. It had crossed the $600 mark. I'd suggest that's a pretty cheap price coin at the moment. Um, you should be looking at Betenzo. I, I, what I've been doing, in case you're wondering, I've just been dollar cost averaging Betenzo every week. Not much, uh, but enough to be happy when it does half of what it's supposed to do. Toncoin continues to do well up 5.1. Casper making a little bit of a comeback, 3.3. And Monero, the true privacy coin, a tiny comeback up 2.9%. Not huge numbers. Core number one up 56.8. BitGet up 23.8. And eCash up 19.4. Righto, kids, grab your comfy blankies. Now over to the biggest losers. <laughs> By the way, look at this um, largest gainer, MAGA coin. Oh, this is going to trigger a few out there. The old MAGA coin is up 40%. Is that, in, I think it's in the last 24 hours. Old MAGA, oh, that's going to trigger a few land whales. Uh, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't do it. I'll get too loose. Okay, so the biggest losers over the week. We haven't got data for wormhole. Wormhole. <laughs> uh, did I just say wormhole? I'm sorry. Blasphemous Libel's cracking up. Hey, Blasphemous Libel, there's another song title for you. Wormhole. <laughs> I meant to say wormhole. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so tired. Wormhole, Athena, and Conflux. You're the th three biggest losers, but we don't have the data except for Conflux, down 24.1%. The next biggest loser with the data that we have is Pepe, down 22.8. Followed by Dog with Hat. You're down 21.4. Followed by Flock Me or Flock E and Flock You. You're down 20.8. Optimism is down 18.8. .8, and Bonk is down 18.2. So let's just review here. Pepe, meme coin, down 22. Dog with hat, meme coin, down 21.4.
Flocky, meme coin, down 20. Bonk, meme coin, down 18. Why do I emphasize that? Because they are immensely volatile meme coins. We're so focused on, yeah, you're going to make heaps of money on meme coins, but don't forget, you can get wrecked on them. Now, look, after the run that they've done, dropping 20% isn't that bad, but it's still just a reminder. When something goes up so quickly, it can fall just as fast, if not faster. You then have Aptos down 18, Celestia down 17, uh, Ajax down 16, Uniswap down 15, Fetch down 14. This is a rough week. Synthetics Network down 14, the Graph GRT down 13, Sui and Say down 13, Worldcoin, good, you're down 13.4, Gala's down 13, Pyth is down 13, that could be a good opportunity to buy some Pyth. That, that's a nice cool off there. You want a dark horse, check out the Pyth network. That's, that's a nice little dip there to get some Pyth if you want to get it. DYDX down 12, Thor down 12, Beam Nice little dip there down 12. The sandbox down 12. Algorand continues to plummet. That's not a dip. That's a continue of a fall of a of what I would suggest is a great coin. You're down another 11.7. That's not a healthy pullback for Algorand. For Beam, it's a healthy pullback. For Pyth, it's a healthy, healthy pullback. For Sui and Say, that's a healthy pullback. Why? Because they've done brilliant runs and they're good coins. But for Algorand, that's not a healthy pullback because it's been doing nothing but falling after what it should have been doing quite well. Algorand fascinates me. I think it's in a world of hurt. And you know what? There's another one I add to the list, kids. If Algorand doesn't do it this cycle, that's it. That's it. So I've put XRP, Hex, ADA, and Algorand. They're all on my do it this time or you're done cycle, a list. You've, you've got one last chance. Oh, no, it'll come back. No, there's, two, there's like 4 million coins now. You're going to have more coins than there are websites. Oh, no, it'll come back. Okay, okay mate. All right. All right. <laughs> Lido down 11.5. Mina Protocol. I hate saying that. Lido Dow down 11.5 and Mina Protocol down 11.3. Are we down 11? Uh, it's a rough week. Not, not super rough, but the biggest gainer is, as you can see, you know, biggest loser is Conflux with the data that we have. And apparently, wormhole that we've now just nicknamed wormhole, <laughs> and core is the, the biggest gainer up fifty six point eight. Did I see another super chat come up? No. Wonder Woman says, Adam, has Bitcoin Cash gone through a halving? If yes, what does it mean for Bcash? No, as I understand it, it's synchronized with Bitcoin because it just forked off Bitcoin, so it's going through the exact same thing. Same with Bitcoin SV, um, but they're all going to go through the same thing. See, it's got the same supply. 21 million because all, all bitcoin cash did was it just forked off bitcoin so it and, and it has bigger blocks and some people thought it was going to be the, the better bitcoin well the, the market has shown no it's not dean kakovsky says adam love the call on bitcoin cash up over 3x since you spoke about it thank you dean haha <laughs> now cashing out a hundred dollars a day and rotating it into my next 10x coin the big stx not financial advice dean beautifully played dean is dean i'm I'm so impressed. You're playing it perfectly. What what did you do? You you basically said, right, this is an easy 5X. It got to 3X. You're not greedy. And now you're pulling out 100 bucks. What are you doing a day? Wonderful. Well played, Dean. Well, okay, someone's helped me out here. Aaron B. Hi, Adam. I believe you need to Google quotes that did not age well. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really struggling here. Qu you're you're a good friend. You're a good family. Quotes. I can't even type that. <laughs> not okay. There we go. Quotes that did not age well. Okay. Ah, oh, there's so many. Which one do I pick? Which one do I pick? Here you go. Buzzfeed. Oh, Buzzfeed. Do I want to pick Buzzfeed? Oh, what have I done? I feel dirty. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to go Buzzfeed. That's too political. I'll tell you what, because it's getting late, I've now got it here. I'll find the best one because there's, there's a lot here. And I'll find a good one and we'll talk about it on the campfire. How's that sound? That sounds good. <laughs> I'm too tired. Things are getting delirious. Okay, let's sign off. Uh, I've got to walk the dogs. We're at the one hour 50 mark. Thank you for your patience with me today. Um, I'm, I'm burning the candle at both ends, as they say. Remember, if you um, 
want to do anything crypto safely, head over to crypto.land. At the time of recording, Bitcoin is at 69,511, Ethereum at $3,398. Uh, biggest gainer over the week was, what do we say it was? Conflux. Biggest gainer was Core. God, struggling. Biggest loser was <laughs> Wormhole. Um, the greed, we are at extreme greed. And things are looking very good, in my opinion. Remember, if you want to do anything crypto safely, head over to the crypto.land. That's www.thecrypto.land, where you can do everything crypto safely in one simple and secure site. If you haven't subscri subscribed yet, hit that uh, subscribe button and the little bell so you get all notifications. Also, hit like. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. And I'll see you around the campfire and talk to you next time.